This is ZNS Total Sports. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Kelsey Johnson. Welcome to Sports Tuesday. We start with breaking news that you will only hear right here. In this exclusive report, Anton Richardson reveals that he has severed ties with the Indianapolis Indians, an arm of the Pittsburgh Pirates organization. Richardson confirmed with our news team early this morning about his release and why he decided to end the contract. The old fellow was invited to spring training with the Pittsburgh Pirates in January. Well, first and foremost, I'm thankful that the organization um, was, was kind enough to release me from my contract because they didn't have to do that. Um, but I just think um, we, me and my, when I say we, me and my agent um, wanted to find a place that uh, we thought might be a better fit at the time. And just at this current time, this place wasn't going to be the best fit. Um, and, and we realized that because I guess there was a, uh, some miscommunication probably um, during the negotiation times of the contract, um, et cetera. But I'm just glad that we we're able to, to get this sorted out um, earlier rather than later. Richardson is confident that he will be selected by another team soon and his baseball career will continue on. The old fielder is still training. Most definitely. Um, I will continue training um, and, and, and stay, in, stay in shape because I uh, want to be as ready as possible once, uh, once I get that phone call. And, um, you know, this is it's important for me. Like, you know, coming off an injury, 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 yeah, it's important for me to, to uh, I guess, the pride, ego thing, whatever you want to call it. But it's important for me to, to, to like, to come back and, and try to be to the player that I was. You know what I mean? It's, and it's a more of a, it's more... It's more something to prove to myself than to anybody else. So that's why I'm looking forward to, to playing again this year. But um, most definitely, I'm going to continue training. Um, and I'm, I'm, I, I anticipate by the end of the week, you know, um, by next week to have a decision one way or the next. So I don't think this process is going to, going to drag on for, for months or weeks. Um, I think within the next seven to ten days, you know, we, um, we'll have a decision one way or the next. So um, I'm looking forward to it, man. Like, like I... Um, it's always it's always good when you have a challenge. It gives you it just gives you an opportunity to drive you a little bit more. So definitely looking forward looking forward to uh, to what's next on uh, on this journey. It was all about the private schools on the first day of the inaugural National High School Soccer Championships. The national tournament showcased the best teams in the senior divisions at the high school level. Even though schools like the St. Augustine's College Big Red Machine dominated play, our Jonathan Benson tells us in this report that it was a defensive struggle with teams missing some good opportunities. The Queens College Comets wasting little time in senior boys play against the CV Bethel Stingrays. In the seventh minute, Kyle Wilson finds the back of the net to open up the scoring. It was kind of a miss kick, but I'll take it. Just four minutes later, David Burrows would put his name in the scorebook. And then right before the half, Burrows back at it again, giving QC a 3-0 advantage. The second one, I know for sure, I just took a touch and I just picked a corner. The first one was the same thing. The Comets' first goal of the second half so quick, my cameraman didn't even have a chance to press record. And from there, QC put two more goals on the board, capping it off with this effort from substitute Benjamin Moultrie Grant. It was amazing. It was a feeling of euphoria because this whole season I was trying to get a goal and they kept coming close, but I never got one. Today in front of my boys in the first game of Nationals, I went out there to get it. And it was just such a great feeling. With the clock running down, QC trying to keep a clean score sheet, but CV Battle had just enough time to pull a goal back. It was just an unfortunate goal. It happened like we missed the clearance and we had a double deflection, so it just caught, caught me wrong footed. Following the Stingrays goal, the whistle would blow. QC wins 6-1 and they now move into the Final Four on Thursday. This is the type of goal that we've been trying to get the guys to play all year. They finally put it together and they put it together at the right time. We played well, but we made a few mistakes. I think if we think of, we get on those teams throughout the time, we will be on the I feel we put our all into the game. We're still not out of very fast, but it's good that we're progressing as the goes along. As for the senior girls, not as much scoring in this one. Sachs Big Red Machine scored once, and that was enough to hold off the CC Sweden Cobras 1 0. Sack now moving into the semifinals. We are off for about two, three weeks. Chichicho, let's say, just finished last week. So, but I was pleased with how we did. I, I, I'm glad we came up with a win. Uh, so, on Thursday, I think we should be expecting to score more goals. 
Jonathan Benson, ZNS Total Sports. Thank you so much, Jonathan. The battle for the national crown just got a little tougher now for those teams that advanced to the semifinal round. The draw for the tournament took place today. Play will start on Thursday. We decided that what we will do is we will play a first round game between the runners up from the two New Providence um, associations, the BISS and the GSSSA. And from there, we will determine. We will then have four, four teams, the champions from Freeport, the GSSSA champions, and the BISS champions, to play alongside the winner from the games that were played in the first round on Monday. Um, from there, we will uh, randomly draw the four teams into two separate games, and those games will be played on Thursday. The one stipulation that we have is that because the teams from Freeport are coming in um, at a <coughs> midday to early afternoon flight, we have decided that their games, whoever they play, end up being drawn against, will be played in the last slot, respectively. How we will set up the Thursday um, set of games, the first games we have scheduled to start at four, and those will be the two um, girls' semifinals. And after that, then we'll have the two boys' semifinals that are estimated, that are scheduled to start around 6.30. The high school national soccer championships kicked off yesterday. The teams coming in from Freeport, Grand Bahama will be in town by Thursday. With regards to the home and away teams, what we'll do is we'll, based on who gets drawn first for each respective game, um, we will have uh, the first team that gets drawn will be, called, will be um, assigned as the home team for logistical purposes. So what we'll do is we'll basically put four, four of the names in the hat and the first two teams that are drawn to get drawn will be the first two pairings and the second two will be the second two pairings and whoever draws against the Freeport team will be assigned as the second game. High school basketball players will get an opportunity to show off their skills this weekend to high school and college coaches. The first annual Top Elite Basketball Showcase will take place at the AF Adley Gym and all basketball players in grades 9 through 12 are invited. We thought that this was well overdue here in Nassau where we bring in college coaches and high school coaches to give our kids um, exposure, um, you know, basically to get off into schools in the United States. I think it's going to do well. The coaches already um, basically did their interviews that we are putting out um, online. You know, they're excited to come down and, and see the talent that we have here in Nassau and we realize that Nassau is extremely loaded with, with talent. You know, I think the world now is actually honing into the Bahamas in terms of the talent that we have. Beautiful Elizabeth Harbor in Georgetown Exuma will be buzzing with activities as skippers get set to sail in the 63rd annual National Family Island Regatta tomorrow. Some 11 boats will contest the A-Class division. There's 14 boats in Class B and 34 sloops in the C-Class. There's also an E-Class which will have 12 boats for a total of 71 sloops. Some of the cup racers are the Commodore Amaris Cup, Class B Governor's General Cup, and in Class A the Prime Minister Cup. Chairman of the local Organizing Committee Ken Eisman McPhee talked about what they're doing differently this year. Well, we are open to expect uh, a better regatta from last year. You know, every year we looking to get better as we go. And so this year um, we looking to for more activities from you know, on the onshore. So we looking forward for that. You know, people are asking for more stuff to do when they get here. So you know, some people come they don't want to watch sailing. You know, so they're looking for something to do onshore. And you know the party and uh, nightlife. We have a lot of that going on after party. So we got a lot to do. Frank Hanna may have been well known for his colorful pants, but to many people, they remember him as a man whose generosity was even more exciting than his pants. He was a man who gave openly to those who needed it most, and that generosity is what many people are remembering him in his death. Dad was an awesome dad and my sister and I have been saying that you know if he wasn't that awesome it might be less painful um, but this is a pain we're happy to endure because um, dad was a, a good dad and he taught us so many things um, he was always positive always happy uh, hence the colors he wasn't afraid of what persons had to say about him 
and that spoke to his self-confidence and his pride and, and what he believed in. He loved Andrus so much. Anybody who came into his home, whether they came from abroad, um, family and friends who never got to travel, he made sure that they got to see his, his Andrus, his home. There were so many family members who never fished before, they never knew what it was to put bait on a hook, um, to catch rock, to catch Andrus, and Dad made sure that they had that experience right here at home. Oh, he spoke of his Andrus. The memorial service for the late Frank Hanna will be held on Thursday at New Bethany Church, Key West Street and Balfour Avenue. The memorial service will start at 7 p.m. May his soul rest in peace. That's all the time we have for sports. I'm Kelsey Johnson.